प्लीज सब्सक्राइब एंड हिट द बेल आईकॉन टू नेवर मिस अ वीडियो फ्रॉम एक्यूर लाइफ साइंस फाउंडेशन माँ सेल्फ डॉक्टर शंतनु आर जोशी अ क्लिनिशियन अ फार्माकोलॉजिस्ट एंड अ ड्रग रिसर्चर dear students today we are going to see the structure of the antibody let's see now i will first go with the general introduction to the antibodies what are antibodies now we'll first go with the definition of antibody what are antibodies the antibodies are specialized serum proteins these are the specialized serum proteins they are formed in response to an antigen and they can react specifically this is very important with that antigen only this is very important every antigen is having its specific antibody number of antigens number of antibodies a antibody can react with a specific antigen if number of antigens are increasing number of antibodies will also increase types of antigens types of antibodies this is very important and do remember the antigen antibody reaction is always having some observable manner what does it mean when an antigen reacts with the antibody some reaction takes place and you can observe that reaction for example precipitation that precipitation reaction you can observe you can observe directly or you can observe it under the microscope yes agglutination reaction this is also a reaction of an antibody with its antigen agglutination reaction that we see in the determination of that blood groups that is also antigen antibody reaction in simple language antibody is a specialized serum protein it is produced in response to some antigen and it can react with specifically with that antigen and it reacts in observable manner that you can observe it this is the definition of uh, antibody now there are two important points only vertebrate animals having the spinal cord vertebrate animals spinal cord those can only produce the antibodies the lower organisms do not produce the antibodies one second important thing the synthesis of antibody starts in the fetal life and it starts in about third month of the intrauterine life do remember this is having some clinical significance also suppose at the time of the birth of the baby and the baby at the time of the birth is having ig g type of antibodies present it means that that baby had infection when it is in its intrauterine state because the production of antibodies starts in our body at the age of third month of intrauterine life now the antibodies are produced mainly by the plasma cells you may ask me sir what is this plasma cell do remember my dear students the plasma cells are the modified lymphocytes they undergo some changes and make themselves convert themselves into the factories of antibodies the factories of antibodies are called as this plasma cells the rate of production of antibody approximate rate of production of antibody per minute by one plasma cell is about 2000 antibodies per minute such cells are known as plasma cells naturally all antibodies are the proteins and all of you know that the proteins are synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum they are synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum 
and to be very specific it synthesizes with the help of ribosomes because every antibody is ultimately a protein where it is being synthesized as a body in the body if you consider the production of these antibodies it is the spleen the major organ for the synthesis of antibodies is the spleen followed by it is the lymph nodes especially the medulla of the lymph nodes and lamina propria of the intestine this is very different but one should note it lamina propria of the intestine also produces antibodies in simple language antibodies are produced in the spleen lymph nodes and lamina propria lamina propria of the intestines now the next thing now antibodies are present in the three important regions one all of you know is the blood all of you know the plasma cells are present in the blood they are producing these antibodies and lot of antibodies that is immunoglobulins are present in the blood i will explain you later this immunoglobulin the word globulin itself is telling you that it's a protein but i will explain it in detail now the second important place where the antibodies are present is all body fluids for example your saliva contains antibodies your tear contains antibodies semen produced contains antibodies all mucus secretions contains antibodies and the third place is the mucosa the internal lining of the multiple organs is also having the antibodies the best example i would like to give you is the respiratory system dear students the low respiratory tract is totally sterile you may ask me how because it is loaded with i g a type of antibody these are known as surface antibodies and that's why the low respiratory tract is totally sterile the same way the gastrointestinal tract is also lined with multiple antibodies they are very important so for the defense mechanism of the body is concerned now they are present in the blood they are present in the different body fluids and they are present in the internal lining of the multiple organs these are the places where the antibodies are present now i would like to tell you two important words and one word is the immunoglobulin immunoglobulin this gives you the structure as well as the chemical form of the antibody chemically those are globulins structurally those are proteins and that's why a synonymous word to antibody is this immunoglobulin which give the structural and the chemical concept the word antibody is also very commonly used it gives you its biological as well as functional concept what they do biologically what they are going to do they are going to kill this is the function of antibody they are going to capture the antigen that is a function that is the biological function of and that's why these two words are important immunoglobulins and antibody both are used interchangeably now tcls and cabot these are the two scientists these were the two scientists they did some experiment in 1937 38 they go for the electrophoresis of the human plasma and after that they get three important or four important uh, precipitants at the different levels and the following graph will show you those details of the electrophoresis now this is the electrophoresis of the human plasma very initially you will get a maximum percentage of this albumin 
this is the first part that you will get with the electrophoresis the second is alpha part and it is the globulin portion albumin and the globulin are the two major proteins of our blood the first you are getting albumin this is the albumin then the remaining portion is of globulin and the globulin is subdivided into alpha globulin beta globulin and gamma globulin and alpha globulin is again subdivided into alpha 1 globulin and alpha 2 globulin here you can see the alpha 1 globulin this is alpha 2 globulin and thereafter comes the beta globulin this is the beta globulin portion this is alpha 2 this is alpha 1 this is albumin albumin and globulin two major separators then the globulin will be subdivided into alpha alpha is subdivided alpha 1 alpha 2 then comes the beta globulin portion this is the beta globulin portion and thereafter comes this gamma globulin portion norma points are very important this gamma globulin portion has ability to react with the antigens and that's why gamma globulin is immunoglobulin now my point is important this portion is indicating that this portion is indicating that the alpha and beta portion also have some antibodies especially beta portion is also having some antibodies but their titer is very very less and that's why most of the time this immunoglobulin word is used for gamma globulins and within those gamma globulins if you go in detail you will find the igg type igm type iga type as the major components of gamma globulin whereas ige and igd are the minor components here you are getting these minor components these are the minor components of the immunoglobulin in very simple language the major portion of the immunoglobulin is igg igm and ig this figure is a historical figure so far the separation of the blood proteins especially the separation of the antibodies is concerned this historical aspect is also very important aspect now what is the chemical nature of antibody what is its chemical nature it is a immunoglobulin but if you go into the details of it you will find that it's actually a glycoprotein it is actually a glycoprotein means glyco means a portion of the carbohydrate and protein all of you know the chain of amino acids if you go in detail of it with the different analysis techniques you will find that the antibodies contain about 80 to 90 82 to 96% of the proteins and 18 to 4% of the carbohydrates this is the chemical structure or the chemical evaluation of the antibodies or the immunoglobulins then the next one is the detailed structure of the antibody my dear students do remember the antibody is having a heavy chain and a light chain all the chains are made up of amino acids now i am going to show you the heavy chain this is the heavy chain very easily you can recognize this heavy chain every antibody is having two heavy chains these are the two heavy chains and each heavy chain is of 50k that is 50000 its molecular weight is 50000 daltons and it is accompanied by a light chain this is the light chain this one is the light chain this one is the light chain and each light chain is of 25k there are two light chains and that's why if you take one side of the antibody this portion is of 50k and this portion is of 25k total comes to 75k and two sides are there this 75 and this 75 that come down to 1.5 lakhs 
this is 1.5 lakhs is the molecular weight of this chain. Now who remember it is having a light chain, it is having a heavy chain and having a light chain. Now within that there are this blue are the constant components. Those are known as constant part of the heavy chain. And this is the constant part of the light chain. This is the constant part of the light chain. This is the constant part of the heavy chain. Now this upper portion is known as variable portion. Why it is called as variable portion? Because the amino acid sequence in this region changes from antibody to antibody. And within that a small portion is there that is known as hyper variable portion or hyper variable region. I will go into the detail of this variable and hyper variable region soon. Just wait. Now my next topic is very important. This constant region of the antibody changes from this is very important. The constant region of IgA will be constant. The constant region of IgM will be constant. But it is different than IgG. IgG constant regions are different than IgM constant regions. What I mean to say. The constant region. My point is very important. My point is very important. The constant region of the antibody determines its type of antibody. IgG stands for gamma, IgM stands for mu, IgA stands for alpha, it should be like this. IgD stands for delta and IgE stands for epsilon. These are the five types of antibodies. These five types of antibodies are due to the change in the constant region of the heavy chain. Do remember the heavy chain, the constant region of the heavy chain of all IgG will be the same. Of all IgM will be the same. But the heavy chain, constant region of IgG will be different than IgM. In very simple language, the heavy chain, constant region determines the type of antibody. This is a very important point. Every student should note this point. Now, the next thing. The light chain is made up of the two type of chains. It is either of the kappa or is either of the lambda. A antibody may have a kappa or may have a lambda. My point is very important. This doesn't change from antibody to antibody. A type of antibody does not depend upon the light chain. Light chain may have a kappa or a lambda chain. Now, if you go in the detail of it, you will find that the kappa chain, kappa light chain, the gene for this kappa light chain is present on the chromosome number 2 whereas the gene for this lambda chain, lambda light chain is present on the chromosome number 22. It is in one way easy to remember. Now my point is very important. This kappa and lambda light chains, if you separate from the blood, you will find that the percentage of the kappa light chain is two times than that of the lambda light chain. In very simple language, the percentage of kappa to lambda is 2 as to 1. But it doesn't determine the type of antibody. This is very important things about the light chain. Now going into the detail of this variable and hyper variable regions. Already I told you my dear students that this is the constant portion. This is the constant portion of the heavy chain. This is the constant portion of the light chain. There is no problem about it. 
Now this region is known as a variable region. And within that variable region, this half portion is known as hyper variable region. It is because of the change in the amino acids. These regions have great change of amino acid. This is having less change and this is having great change. And that's why we call it variable region and we call it hyper variable region. A variable and the total is variable and within that variable this is the hyper variable region. Now this hyper variable region determine the different nature of the antibody to which it is going to react, to which antigen it is going to react. Uh, I would like to go in the detail of this very soon. Now, within this hyper variable region, the actual region which is going to react with the antigen is this region. And this is known as CDR region complementary determining region it is the actual region which tells you which type of antigen is exactly going to re react with it this is a very important point and if you go in the detail of it i would like to go in the detail of this hyper variable region and the cdr region of hyper variable region i will take the close view of it and this is the close view of it that is going to tell you a very important thing. Dear students, remember this is the light chain portion and the light chain portion of the hyper variable region or the CDR region is having these three pits. I should change the color. It is giving you these three pits and these are known as hot spots. Whereas this is the constant portion of the antibody and that constant portion of the antibody, sorry, this is the uh, heavy chain and this is the variable region of the heavy chain. This is the hyper variable region of the heavy chain and within that this is the CDR portion of the heavy chain which shows you 1, 2, 3 and four hotspots, you can call it pits also. Do what I mean to say. The hyper variable region or the CDR region of the light chain is not complementary to its heavy chain. They are different. The heavy chain hyper variable region or the CDR region is having four hotspots. Whereas the light chain is having three hotspots. Now my point is important. This light chain pits are complementary with the light chain pits of the another side. This heavy chain pits are same as that of these heavy chain pits. They are compatible. And this is how this portion, this portion, this portion determines which antigen is going to react with it. And that is the most important region and the most variable region. It changes from antibody to antibody and naturally it changes from antigen to antigen. The binding of the antigen depend upon this area. And this is a very important part of this presentation. Now, we talked about this hyper variable region and the CDR region. Now, there are important bonds and those are also very important. Now, this is the heavy chain and this is the light chain. The heavy chain and the light chain are attached to each other by a disulfide bond. This is the disulfide bond. Now, this is heavy and this is light and that's why we call it interchain bonding. Interchain between two different chain bonding. This is the disulfide bond of interchain bonding. And now, this is a also a disulfide bond. But this disulfide bond is going to bind the two portions of the heavy chain. And that's why this bond is known as intra-chain. Within the same chain, it is going to bound the two portions. And that's why this is a disulfide bond of intra-chain binding. 
and this is interchange binding this is interchange binding this is interchange binding of the disulfide bond this disulfide bonds are very important i will explain about this disulfide bonds soon just wait now the next thing function of antibody what the antibodies are going to do all of you know the very basic function there are many functions of the antibodies i am going to tell you few of them and the first thing that i am going to tell you is this cdr region this cdr region specifically reacts with the antigen and it captures that antigen neutralizes the antigen stops the toxic effect of the antigen and this is how these antibodies in that way are very important they constrain that antigen and this is the major function of every antibody but this is not the only function of the antibody because this region the site of attachment of the complement this is known as ch1 what is the ch constant constant part of the heavy chain one this is the constant part of the heavy chain part two and this is the site which activates the complement complement is a series of activation of the proenzymes or the proteins which ultimately results in the lysis of the infected cell and that portion this portion of the antibody is responsible for that activation of complement especially c1 complement is activated by this portion now this is the ch3 portion this ch3 portion is responsible for attachment to the monocytes my point is very important antibody signal antibody stimulate antibody stimulate these monocytes also those antibodies can stimulate this portion of the antibody is responsible for that stimulation and that's why this is very important all the sulfide bond region is known as hinge region of the antibody this is having many functions i will go in detail when i will study the types of antibodies in detail i'm just giving you the overlook of these antibodies today hope so dear student you like my given explanation i'm going for the next one and the next one is the papain digestion my dear students the papain is derived from the papaya all of you know that papaya yes it is having one digestive enzyme known as papain its commercial value is very high some of the indian companies also send the they produce this papain or pepsin all of you know pepsin is a digestive enzyme if you treat the group of antibodies with the help of either papain or the pepsin it bring about the cleavage of the antibody and that cleavage takes place in this portion of this disulfide bonds the intra chain disulfide bonds break by the use of this papain and the pepsin and what does it give you if you treat it with the papain and then you go for the electrophoresis you will get two separate portions one portion is the upper portion and that portion still reacts with the antigen and that's why we call this region as a fraction antigen binding fraction antigen binding is this portion this portion after digestion still reacts with the antigen and that's why it has given this name now the second portion is known as fc portion that is fraction crystallizable it can be crystallized but this c is having some other for some other uh, significance also it may give you that this is the carboxyl terminal of the antibody this is the amino terminal this is the amino terminal of the antibody and this is the carboxyl terminal of the antibody every antibody is ultimately a protein and every protein is having amino terminal and carboxyl terminal for the antibody this lower portion is having the carboxyl terminal and the upper portion is having this amino terminal so this is how we split it into fab portion and fc portion by the use of papain and the pepsin now 
what AB por what AB portion is responsible for all of you know that this FAB portion that is a fraction antigen binding is responsible for binding of the antigen it determines which antigen is going to bind there this is a very important portion and do remember the portion of the antibody which is having this heavy chain the heavy chain portion of the antibody which is in FAB portion is popularly known by the name FD portion of the antibody. I will talk to you later about this FD portion. Just you now remember that this portion of the antibody from the heavy chain is known as FD portion of the antibody. And all of it, both of them from the light chain and from the heavy chain, they determine which antigen should bind there. And this is the main function of this FAB portion. Now, we'll go in detail of this FC portion. Now, you may ask me, sir, what is the function of this FC portion? Already I told you, the FC portion is responsible for this carboxyl terminal. Sorry, carboxyl terminal is represented by this one. This portion is responsible for binding to the complement and stimulation of the complement system. Ultimately, it will result into the complement fixation and the killing and degradation of the infected cells. This lower portion is going to bind with the uh, lymphocytes. Stimulation of monocyte is the function of this portion. This portion also determines the catabolic activity of the antibody. The antibodies will not remain in the blood forever. They will remain for some time and they are going to be degraded by the body. And body develops some immunity, some memory for this production of antibody. And next time if the same attack is there, body will produce the antibody very fast. Now, this is the function of the FC portion. FC portion C actually stands for crystallizable portion of the antibody. Do remember this portion after electrophoresis doesn't have any chance of attachment of any antigen. The antigen attachment is only for FAB portion. Hope so dear students, up to this point you like my explanation. Now what exactly the antibodies are going to do? Do remember antibodies are having many functions. I am going to tell you few of them. And the first function of antibody which is known to you is the attachment of the antigen. Every bacteria, every virus is having a specific portion. If you can block that specific portion, the effectivity of that bacteria, the effectivity of that virus significantly reduces, it becomes non vulnerable And that is how these antibodies are going to act on a specific portion of that antigen. Now see, this is the virus and these are the antibodies. They are going to just block the portion of this virus. These are the viruses and these are the antigenic portion of the virus. It is also known as epitope and this is known as paratope. This portion is known as paratope. This portion is known as paratope. This portion is known as epitope. And if you, if you just, these are going to react with each other. And this is the main function of the antibody to neutralize these antigens. Now, the second function is the signaling. The signaling is a very important thing. Whenever a cell is infected by the viruses, especially by the viruses or by the bacteria, body should kill that. But how body is going to know that this is an infected cell? Yes, and this is the function of the antibody. See, this antibody is going to, this is an infected cell, this is the signaling. It is giving you the signal. Now the signal has passed to this cell. This cell produced the pseudopoda. The pseudopoda captured the cell and now these lysosomal enzymes are going to disintegrate that infected cell. And this is how the infected cell is completely disintegrated with the help. And how it is possible? Why it is possible? It is possible because of the very simple thing that this antibody is going to signal it. It signaled and that's why this 
phagocytic cell is able to produce the pseudopoda around the cell and after taking the cell inside it liberates some lysosomal enzymes over it and is going to degrade that cell this is how killing of the infected cell takes place by signaling of the antibody and one more function I'm going to show you and that is the stimulation of the mast cell all of you know my dear students that histamines are the major mediators of the hypersensitivity reaction or the allergic reactions these antibodies are important because the antibodies are going to stimulate this mast cell these are the mast cells and these are the vesicle containing the histamines the uh, PF that is platelet aggregating factor the 5-HT and all inflammatory cytokines are there inside these granules, in, inside these vesicles. Now see how the antibody is going to stimulate this mast cell. These are the, this is the stimulated cell. This is how they are going to liberate the histamines. This is how the histamines are liberated. Let's see again. This is the antibody which is going to stimulate this mast cell. Once it is stimulated, there is a degranulation of this cell and this is going to release the histamines, the PF, 5-HT and so many other cytokines and those are going to produce the allergic reaction in the body. In very simple language, antibodies can mediate even the allergic reaction inside our body. My dear students, this is just the introduction to the structure of the antibodies and some of their functions. In the coming lectures, I will be talking about in detail about the antibodies, how they are produced, what is the exact mechanism. I will be talking to you about the different type of immunities and in detail we will study this immunity topic. Thank you dear students for being with me for such a long time. Thank you. Dear students, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.